Hundreds of billionaires, dozens of government ministers and central bank governors are due to attend the World Economic Forum in Davos this week, seen as a get-together for the global super-rich. And the charity Oxfam says they are getting richer. Davos is back in January. The Festival of Wealth is back. Um, and we're bringing alarming new findings which show that you know, the 1%, the richest 1% in the world have grabbed nearly two thirds of all new wealth created since 2020. That equates to $42 trillion, according to Oxfam, nearly twice as much as the bottom 99% of the world's population. Oxfam says the source of that wealth is partly government money, emergency liquidity pumped into the global economy as the coronavirus pandemic forced countries into lockdown in 2020. That was essential, but at the same time, the ultra wealthy were able to really ride this asset boom that resulted, this stock market boom that resulted. And without the guardrails of progressive taxation in the economy, the ultra-wealthy were really able to line their pockets. Oxfam calculates that at least 1.7 billion workers now live in countries where inflation is outpacing wages, meaning people are getting poorer. However, the wealth of billionaires has surged as inflation drives up food and energy prices. We were able to show how 95 food and energy corporations have actually been able to double their profits in 2022. Oxfam is calling for windfall taxes imposed on energy companies to be extended to food companies making big profits. It also wants a tax of up to 5% on the world's multi-millionaires and billionaires. Extreme inequality is not inevitable and a strategic precondition to a more equal world is taxing the ultra wealthy. This isn't about you know nurses, teachers, the middle class. Um, this is really about those at the very top, ensuring um, that they're paying far fairer um, taxes. The organizers of the World Economic Forum insist the meeting does benefit everyone. It's so much is at stake. We really need to find solutions on the wars and conflicts. But we also have to secure that we don't go into a recession and we have 10 years of low growth as we had in the 1970s. That is at stake and we need all the stakeholders to be part of working uh, towards a safer and more inclusive uh, growing global economy. The World Bank warned in October that progress in tackling extreme poverty has ground to a halt amid soaring inflation and slowing economic growth. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London.